Welcome to this presentation where we will discuss what expiratory occlusion pressure is along with why and how we perform this maneuver. Lung stress and respiratory effort during assisted mechanical ventilation is like an iceberg. To see the true size of the iceberg, we need to see what is below the water along with what is above the water. The expiratory occlusion pressure helps determine whether spontaneous breathing is present or absent and to assess the magnitude of respiratory effort during spontaneous breathing. The typical practice of assessing waveforms and measuring airway pressures such as peak, plateau, and driving airway pressure from the ventilator to identify global lung stress and strain is unreliable when there is patient effort. The airway pressure waveform reflects the ventilator's effect on the lung, but does not reflect the effect of the patient's respiratory effort. Consequently, the true lung descending pressure is not accurately assessed. Assessing airway pressure and flow waveforms cannot detect the increased transpulmonary pressure produced by negative pleural pressure swings resulting from the activation of inspiratory muscles. The gold standard for evaluating respiratory effort is esophageal monitoring, which calculates the pressure generated by respiratory muscles based on esophageal pressure swings. However, interpreting the measured results require time, specialized equipment, and expertise to interpret the values when using esophageal monitoring. Hence, it would be ideal if busy practitioners could adopt a simple, practical, and non-invasive approach for monitoring respiratory effort. A way to non-invasively assess excessive inspiratory effort and dynamic lung stress of patients on mechanical ventilation is to measure the expiratory occlusion pressure. To measure this pressure, an expiratory hold is applied for the length of one inspiratory breath or up to five seconds if no respiratory effort develops. If the patient is apneic during the occlusion, no pressure swing will develop and PEOC would equal to zero centimeters of water. On the other hand, if the patient is breathing spontaneously and making inspiratory efforts, they will generate a negative pressure swing against the occluded airway. This negative pressure swing reflects the magnitude of respiratory effort and reveals the iceberg under the water, so to speak. Because a single end expiratory occlusion does not affect the respiratory drive or the extent of diaphragm activation, PEOC can be used to estimate the pressure generated by the respiratory muscles during assisted unoccluded breaths. To avoid excessive or insufficient effort and excessive lung descending pressures, PEOC should generally be between minus 20 to minus 5 centimeters of water, but these values are currently still being studied. This is an example of how different waveforms would look like on the mechanical ventilator during an expiratory occlusion pressure maneuver on a patient with vigorous spontaneous breathing efforts. To calculate PEOC, you subtract the PEEP from the lowest airway pressure value during the occlusion pressure maneuver. We will temporarily call this value PEEP trough. In this example, the PEEP is 10 centimeters of water. The PEEP trough is minus 5 centimeters of water making the expiratory occlusion pressure in this example minus 15 centimeters of water. As mentioned earlier, the measured occlusion pressure can be used to estimate the respiratory muscle pressure and dynamic transpulmonary driving pressure during tidal unoccluded breaths. However, the amplitude of the pressure generated by the diaphragm contraction during the occluded breath is larger than what is generated when the airway is not occluded due to differences in the physiology of quasi-isometric and quasi-isotonic muscle contractions. Therefore, the PEOC value needs to be multiplied by a validated factor, as shown in the following calculations to predict respiratory muscle pressure and dynamic transpulmonary driving pressure. For predictive respiratory muscle pressure, it is the product of minus 3 over 4 times PEOC. For the predicted dynamic transpulmonary driving pressure, you first find the difference between peak airway pressure minus PEEP, subtract that by the product of 2 over 3 times PEOC. But please note that the predicted dynamic transpulmonary driving pressure can only be calculated with a PEOC of less than 0 centimeters of water. 
These values can also be calculated by using the online calculator at rtmaven.com forward slash hashtag POCC. It is important to note that the best targets for dynamic transpulmonary driving pressure, respiratory muscle pressure, and occlusion pressure for protecting the lung and diaphragm are still currently being studied. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.